Okay, um, everyone, it's 401. This is Catherine Kramer, town planner. Um, I will take roll and then turn it over to our chairman, um, Evan Honeyman. Here. Um, Jay O'Leary. Jay's absent tonight. Uh, James Calciano. I don't see him. He's not here yet. Um, Sally has some Bueller is absent. Yes. Uh, Jay Bambara. Present. John Renahan. Here. Uh, Elizabeth Gemski is absent this evening. Yes. And Ted Sanford. Here. Okay, so we have four quorum. And I turn it over to our chairman. Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all having a nice summer so far. I will call to order the virtual meeting of the Town of Farmington Historic District Commission for Tuesday, July 20th, 2021 at 4.02 p.m. Before we begin, I'm going to appoint both of our present alternates, Mr. Renahan and Mr. Sanford, please, to sit as regular members for the entirety of, uh, of the, the meeting today, the hearing today. Um, all right, Mr. Bombari, would you please be able to read the entire public notice into the record? If we can pull sure. that up for you. Thank you. you. You want me to read all of them at once or? Yes, please, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Notice is hereby given that the Farmington Historic District Commission will hold an online public hearing on Tuesday, July 20, 2021 at 4 p.m. on the following applications. Rick Walk Shops LLC application for temporary certificate of appropriateness to replace siding as needed at 357 Brick Walk Lane and 767 Farmington Avenue. Art FX signs application to replace signs on building six for new tenant at 767 Farmington Avenue. Jack Kemper application for expansion of home to enlarge second floor and extend mudroom at 33 High Street. At these hearings, interested persons may be heard. A copy of this proposal is on file in the planning department at Town Hall, Farmington, Connecticut. It may also be accessed online uh, at uh, the URL or by calling the planning department at 860-675-2325. Data to Farmington, Connecticut, this first day of July, 2021. Jay Bombara, Acting Secretary of Farmington Historic District Commission. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. For our first agenda item this afternoon, Ms. Marino is here on behalf of Brickwalk Shops LLC. Could you please just state your name uh, and the addresses you're representing for the record and then please proceed with uh, with your presentation. Um, Kathy Marino for Brickwalk Shops and the um, addresses are 357 Brickwalk Lane and 767 Farmington Avenue. We are looking to um, get approval for um, hardy siding to be placed on the buildings as they are needed. Um, not all at once, but whenever the buildings require to be sited. Okay. Okay. I know we're just scrolling through some of the materials here. Yeah. Uh, while we're doing that, I'll open it up to, to the commissioners for any questions and comments. And uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Bombara. Okay, I have a couple of things. Um, I guess my first question is, and I'm going to punt it right to our expert uh, here today, Ted, and just uh, have him confirm whether this material is something that he thinks is appropriate uh, for the district and obviously will uh, stand up uh, the test of time. Yeah, I think it's appropriate. We've, we've approved it a couple of times previously at Brickwalk Shops and I believe in other locations too. Very difficult to tell the difference between this and wood once it's up. Okay. Um, if I would also uh, ask uh, the applicant, I, 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 are there other, or do some of the buildings already have some of this material? Yes, we just had, um, the dentist office, which is at 771, mm -hmm. recited, um, and that's been up for a year or so. Yep. Okay. It, was, it had previously been approved. And then my third 
thought is really sort of a procedural thing, which is, um, you know, they're, they're, the applicant's not asking for specific replacement of a specific uh, building. Well, the buildings, I guess, are specific, but, you know, it, it, it's a, sort of an ongoing open uh, permission to do this over time. Um, and I guess my instinct is to say that's probably fine. I guess I worry, what do I worry? You know, trying to dream the dragons. Uh, I don't know. In, in five years, we determine that this is actually a pretty bad material and it's falling apart. I know it's not going to happen. Everybody will tell me. So I just wonder whether we should have some kind of a, a time limit on it. Uh, so, I mean, they can obviously come back in whatever time limit that might be uh, and just get it renewed, assuming that uh, the commission still determines it to be appropriate, which I uh, hard time understanding why. So I guess I throw that out there as an idea. If I had to put a time on it, I would say uh, three years, I guess. And I guess I'd also ask, I mean, if other uh, either staff, town staff or um, anybody has any thoughts on that, uh, I'd be open to it as well. But I just, I guess I'm just a little gun shy about giving an, a blanket thing that theoretically uh, lasts in perpetuity. Um, can I say something to that effect? Sure. Um, we did in, um, when 16 Brickwalk Lane was in uh, built, the siding was used on that and that was built, I believe in uh, 2012. And there has been no issues with the exterior building siding at all on that building. So that's been longer than three years. Yeah, no, I, I, um, mm -hmm. I understand. And I'm okay. not suggesting I really expect it to be a problem. I just, again, I, Okay. Uh, open-ended. That's, that's my only point. But, uh, but I do agree with you. I, I have no problem with the material. Expect it will be forever fine. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bombara. Mr. Sanford, do you have any? Do you have any other questions or comments you'd like to add? Um, I, I agree with Jay's thought about time limit. Uh, I think three years is reasonable. Okay. There have been products in the past that have been a composite siding material that everybody thought was going to be the greatest thing in the world and over um, an extended period of time, it, it did deteriorate and there were all kinds of lawsuits over it. So you never know. I, I think three years is reasonable and it's not a big deal to come back and get it renewed. So uh, I'm okay. in favor okay. of that idea. Okay, thank you. Mr. Renahan. Hey, no questions. And I uh, agree with the three year uh, time limit. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? So, uh, Chairman, this is Catherine Kramer, town planner. Uh, I just want to reiterate any construction or work to the exterior of these buildings um, will go through the building permit process and town staff will be aware of um, what's been approved here and make sure that that is, you know, continuing through the building permit process and part of the approvals of those. Um, and I can be uh, continue to give you guys information as we see those building permits come through and um, don't want it to seem like it's a blanket approval without you guys being involved uh, in two years if we get a building um, coming forward with this proposed siding. Uh, it's absolutely something that town planner can continue to update you guys on. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments from commissioners? Evan, just to, I want to be clear for the applicant. So just to be clear too, I'm not, we're not saying that uh, if in three years, that means you have to get the siding you've already put on and approved. It's just a matter of you're going to put more siding on another building at that point. But that, that's all we're saying. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to come back and just get a, a renewal of that approval. So thank, okay. thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't think anyone is on from the public, but if anybody is on from the public and there are any questions or comments, uh, please raise your Zoom hand and Catherine will be able to unmute you. So again, um, as uh, mentioned, if you're interested in making a public comment, please raise your hand in the Zoom function. No hands are raised. Okay, hearing none. So it sounds like the there's a there's a condition of three years we'd like to put on this uh, on this application for for a motion. So is there a motion with a condition that someone would like to to put forward? Yeah, I'll, I'll make the motion. Um, I'll make a motion that we 
uh, approve a temporary certificate of appropriateness in accordance with the application with the condition that uh, the approval to use uh, uh, the siding uh, is for a, a maximum of three years in which time they need to come back for a, a new approval. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. Is there, is there a second? I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed, please say aye. Hearing none. And any abstentions? Hearing none. Okay, motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Marino. Thank you. Okay. Um, for our second agenda item, looks like Ms. Vess is here on behalf of Brick, is also here on behalf of Brick Walk Shops, LLC. Could you please state your name and address, uh, the address that you're representing for the record, and then uh, please proceed um, with your presentation. Evan, we have um, Linda is representing um, oh. the, the Brick Walk Shops for uh, the sign. Okay, is she on? Sorry, I looked like there was somebody else on. Um, yeah, that's a high street. Megan is in uh, connection to the high street application. Maybe she has the phone number. I will bump over the phone number and allow okay. them to call. Um, if the individual on the phone is calling in for um, the application regarding brick walk shop signage, please unmute yourself and you're welcome to present your application. The 839 number is also 33 High Street. Okay. Okay. Thanks for letting us know. You're, You're missing one of the applicants on this call. Okay. Mm. Skip for now. So, okay. Uh, so yeah. we'll just skip ahead. And um, if, you, if that applicant does join, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll just go through that application at that time. So we're going to skip ahead. And I believe Mr. Kemper is here. Uh, could you please state your name? and address that you're representing for the record, and then please proceed with your presentation. Uh, good afternoon, Jack Kemper, Kemper Associates Architects. And I'm here uh, with uh, Ryan and Megan Vess, who have just closed on 33 High Street last week. And we are looking to uh, sort of, uh, to uh, enlarge the second floor, make it a little more rational in its layout and size, so it works better for a family with three children. And we are also looking to extend the mudroom. Um, we have some pictures. I, I'm sure everybody's familiar with the house. It's, uh, um, yeah, yeah, thanks, Kat, the site. It's, it's, uh, it, it used to actually enter off the Stanley Whitman house. And, uh, and I don't know when this was changed, but probably 20 years ago or whatever, they changed the driveway. Uh, the house is a beautiful lot. It's way up from the street. Um, and the site plan, I just wanted to show you the sort of the big picture is where I have it hatched um, in the center, thanks, <laughs> is where we're looking to raise uh, the roof. Um, we first started looking at uh, extending dormers and doing, um, you know, just sort of uh, ad hoc little things to make the second floor work better. Um, but uh, it really works to really, and I think it's best for the house to just uh, raise the roof. So we have a center portion that still steps down on either side. So the house was built in 1956. And then the other thing you'll see is uh, we're looking at a small extension of the mudroom next to the garage. So then we can go up to the to the drawings. This uh, we we can kind of, but these are the as built drawings, just so you get a sense of how the house is put together. Now these are the house the drawings that we have measured um, for for now. And then um, this is these are the proposed drawings, um, and you can see um, the yes the this first sheet. Um, it's where this is our two story section in the center. And then we're stepping down to get a little more room on the south end of the house, but we don't want it totally two stories. We still want that stepping and it kind of feel natural like a New England house that's been added on to over, over time. 
Um, the, the north elevation is what you see uh, coming down from Farmington Avenue. You can't really see that. So um, it's, 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 it's kind of up the street, but I, I know um, your guys' rules you depend on if trees were gone and stuff. So, so we're, we're showing you what we're doing around the whole house. Um, we'll have to raise the chimneys to, to do this. Um, this is the south side. Um, and again, we're, we're raising the, the, the main part over the main living room, full two stories, then stepping down and then stepping down again on the south side where we pick up the original roof line. Um, then we go down to um, the plan. Uh, first floor, most interior work, not, not, uh, not really under your purview, except what I will say is that we would like to, we found that the entry is fairly hidden. So we'd like to, on the same footprint, uh, rebuild the front porch and give it an eyebrow dormer to call a little more attention to the entry. So that's uh, portrayed um, on, on our elevations. And then uh, we can go down to the second floor, I think. Um, uh, this is good. We're, as part of what we're doing, this section, um, new second floor where I have it uh, uh, pointed out is, is the full, the two bedrooms and a bath are full two story. Then we step down to, I think a four foot high wall at bedroom four. And then, and then we go down to, um, a, uh, well, we keep the four foot high wall. One of the interesting things about the house, because it's added on to so many times since 1956, there's all sorts of internal steps. So we're, when, so these wall heights are kind of, you know, it's not all, it's sometimes it's the floor moving up and not the wall moving down. Um, the, the back of the house, um, except for where, where we're having the window at the stair and the bedroom is pretty much the same. Um, and, and then I think we have some details of the mudroom in the garage. Um, the next sheet, I think. Thank you, Catherine and Sandy. They, you got the order correctly. So <laughs> I appreciate it. What do you want now? I never, I never number my sketches, and it just occurred to me that that would be kind of a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you can see the the garage elevation. The garage actually has a, um, a lean-to kind of that actually looks pretty nice. It's in the photographs. I sent a photograph of that uh, above. So we're looking just to match that um, on the west side of the garage for an extended mudroom. Uh, one of the things that's going to happen is that's going to be, uh, that's going to have to be a retaining wall, um, that garage, because there is a uh, sort of uh, carved out um, entry to the basement that that is is right there now we can look at it on the site plan and then i also wanted to give you a, a a little better detail drawing of the porch so what i have is a uh, a uh, an, an eyebrow dormer something that's it's in the same footprint we've just made the 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 columns a little thicker and given the eyebrow to call a little more attention to the um to, to the entry, because it's really, when you drive up the driveway, one of the things we noticed when we first walked around is it's kind of hard to figure out where the front door is. So this, this gives us a little bit of, uh, a little bit more of a, a presence there without overpowering anything. The, the roof is in the same place. We may want to, we'd like to think about doing that in a metal roof, like a painted metal roof that match the same color as the shingles. So that's, um, what we're doing. Okay, thank you very much. I'll open it up to questions and comments from the commissioners and we'll start first with Mr. Sanford. Um, I like the design. I think it's, a, it's appropriate for the neighborhood. I think it, it'll look good. My question is all about the materials being used. So I noticed somewhere it said the windows would be SDL. Are they wood windows? Do you know what kind? Uh, we don't have the brand yet. We haven't really talked about that. Uh, we'd have to see what's there. A lot of them are SDL windows now. I think some of them are clad. Some of them are wood. There's all sorts of windows there now. So um, um, we haven't really chosen a brand, but I, I would expect since everything's white, 
Ted, I think we would pro I would probably see if we could do a clad window uh, with the SDLs. If that would a be what, acceptable. A what window? Uh, a, a clad, a, an aluminum clad. Okay. Yeah, I, I think most aluminum clads, you know, with wood, wood sash, you know, interior wood sash with cladding on the outside and SDL, we've, we've approved a couple of different brands before. Yeah. Um, siding is going to be wood clapboards. Yeah, we, we, we expect to match the siding because the, uh, the thing is we're, we're doing kind of a big intervention, but we're doing it in a small space. So most of the siding on the house is going to remain the same. So we would just do wood. We'd match the, the trim and everything that, that's there. Okay. And match the roofing as well. Yeah, other, I, I other than so, the metal. Yeah, other than the metal, I don't know how old that roof is. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, um, Megan, when you had it um, inspected, did they say how old it was? I think they did. Um, there were certain sections that maybe need to be replaced, and it's probably along with the you know additions in different time periods. Yeah, so I think it'd be the kind of color, the kind of roof we would we would um, we would do. So I don't know, you know, depending on how old it is, the the there might be a substantial portion of this that gets re-roofed, Ted. I think. But it would just be a typical fiberglass architectural, architectural grade, architectural grade fiberglass yeah. shingles. Yeah. Okay. And the the front door, are you leaving that the way it is, or are you changing that? I left the front door, but I added some trim around it. Okay. All right, that's the only questions I've got. Okay, thank you. Mr. Renahan? Hey, I like the design and had some of the same material questions, but they were answered, so all set. Great, thank you. And Mr. Bombara? Uh, yeah, Ted, as usual, asked most of the right questions. Um, I guess I just want to be clear, again, just so that things can proceed smoothly, I guess I'm thinking more procedurally. So, the application says enlarge the second floor, and I think you cover that, and I think that the drawings do. And then it says extend mudroom. Uh, can you show me where that is again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's on the drawings. Sorry, Jay. Why didn't, I think I skipped right over it. Or I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> Multitasking. Take your time. Try to do a few things at once. <laughs> it's this, this little... Um, up, up here, you, you got it. Almost right. there. No, no, up a little higher. Right here. That's where I was matching the lean to on either side of the garage. Okay, so, so that. Roughly a nine by, by 11 addition. And that is separate and distinct from the porch, you mentioned? Yeah, the porch is down here. Mm -hmm. I keep thinking my. my, my uh, arrow works. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to match what you're Catherine's saying. Catherine's got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess that's what I'm. So that's the porch, and then the mud room is up by the garage. Uh, I, I, I guess looking at the application, I just, it's not all on there. I guess the porch isn't now that I look at it. The uh, mud room is, is, I mean, it's on the drawing, but it's not. So in this elevation, you can see the mudroom addition as well as the porch. Okay, I guess I just would want it to be clear in the approval that that's in there as well. Again, I, and I'm only looking at the text of the written application, which for the description just says that uh, extend mudroom and raise the roof. So I don't, again, I don't, I don't, I'm fine with what you're doing, and certainly the look of it looks great. Um, so let's just make sure we're clear on that. And I guess since we have the drawing, I guess I'm okay proceeding on that as well. The, the other item you mentioned, um, Jack, was the a retaining wall. That to, Where would that be? Which elevation? That's at the mudroom. If you go, um, Catherine, to my detail sheet, I think. Or for, yeah, we'll start at the site. Start, start at the site first, I think. But if, if there's a, um, there's like this big gully kind of going, see here, this walk. 
yeah, oh yeah. So well, you go in the front door walk. It's it's this it's the one. Be- this there's a gully down there. That there's a door down there, and we're yep. we're proposing to do is the our mudroom will have to have um, go down all the way to the basement because it's kind of out of the ground. And if we go to my um, my uh, third uh, third sheet with the, that detail. See the side of it. If you mm-hmm. see the north elevation, um, that and it's it's right behind all everybody's picture is what's going on. But uh, I, I, there's the 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 walls going down, and you see it from the west elevation. It's it's it, it's it's a it's a full concrete wall. And will that be visible from the road? Do you think? I don't think so. It's hard to find, actually. Okay. I think I took a picture of it and see if that, I, I, if, if not, there was one picture that was too big to send for some reason that might've been it, so. All right, freaks uh, out. Yeah, no, I think, I think I, I, I didn't, I, I, I tried to send it and it was too big, but, but there's just like a little um, walk um, going down uh, well, from I, the driveway, but it's it's hard to see. It's behind the circle drive. It's behind the porch. I guess what I what I'd suggest, uh, at least for me, uh, obviously the commission can decide, is that we sort of leave that retaining wall concept out of this. And if you want a retaining wall, you just check with, uh, however we in, currently are. Um, making determinations as to whether something requires a permit. So if it's not visible from the street and doesn't require it, then we'll go that way. If we, de- if it's determined it is visible from the street, then I would ask that you come back for that. And I'm, again, I'm not saying we won't necessarily approve it. I just, I guess I'm just not comfortable saying a concrete wall of some, I mean, I don't know how high is this wall going to be, uh, whether or not that, you know, is really appropriate, um, for the house or for the uh, district. I'm not saying it won't be. I'm just saying uh, I don't, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, if we can look at it on the plan, I just think it's really um, almost invisible. Yeah, there, that, it's down It's down here. She's got it. So it's, see the driveway? Right. It's between mm-hmm. the crevice between the garage and the house. Yeah. And I, I'm calling a retaining wall. What it is, is the, the it's not a separate wall. It's just, the, the the basement, the the foundation okay. of the mudroom will, will go down further than than the, down at the garage. So it's not. Oh, it's so not it's, a, it's, it's really not a, found- a separate. It's not a separate foundation wall. part of the. It's the foundation the, wall. Correct. Oh. It's just got to act it, engineering wise. It's got to act as a retaining wall. Oh, in that case, okay, all right. So that's. I apologize for the confusing. Uh, nomenclature but <laughs> the engineers would say that's a retaining wall so right uh okay um no i like the fact that on the um uh, on your application it does say you're going to match existing materials so yeah um, obviously that's what you'll do so that's fine um you know i think uh, if you want the windows i guess we need to um you know they're going to have to either be wood or um aluminum clad um, I think that's what that's what we we would do. All right. I, I think, uh, frankly, and Ted will uh, agree or disagree, but we find wood windows kind of a tough sell these days. And then, what about um, panes? Like, uh, I don't know, what, match existing also? Whether yeah, it's... yeah, the, uh, yeah. What we're proposing is a simulated divided light where they're interior and exterior. Right, but six over six or whatever yeah. they are. Oh, yeah, they're drawn as as they're drawn as as portrayed. Okay. So we're generally matching the sizes. Okay. Well, I, I will say that uh, this house has been amazing. I've you know been fortunate to live in the village about 20 years, and I've watched this house uh, uh, undergo a lot of organic change, which is typical for houses in the district. Um, and I must say that all the changes have been excellent. And these look like uh, even more, and, and, and greatly appreciate um the new owners and welcome them to the neighborhood and thank them for the investment that they're putting into 
these homes, which keeps uh, our village so special and uh, value. So uh, with that, I, that's all I've got. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bambara. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? Hearing none, as, uh, as before, if there are any questions or comments from the public, please use the uh, raise hand function on Zoom and Catherine will unmute you. I am looking at the Zoom function. There are no hands raised. Last call if anyone would like to make public comment. No hands are raised. All right, hearing none, is there a motion on this application? Well, I guess I'll do it as well since I up all the procedures. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, grant a temporary certificate of appropriateness in accordance with the application uh, as submitted, uh, which shall include the um, extended porch as shown on the in the application drawings. Um, and, I, uh, and that uh, windows may either be uh, wood or uh, aluminum clad with the wood underneath. Okay, thank you very much. We have a motion, is there a second? I second. All right, any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed, please say aye. Hearing none, any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Um, Thank Catherine, you. For, for this we other have... application, do we need to continue the application? So, so Linda has logged on and she is- Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. To be able to herself and be able to present her application now. Um, there were some challenges logging on, I believe. So Linda- Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. Thank I you. I am here. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So I, I apologize. I just had a, some technical difficulties. No problem um, at all. Thank you for, um, for the wait. Um, all right. So the application before you is for um, a replacement of two existing signs at 767 Farmington Avenue. Um, so the old, the former Truffles um, location. Uh, Hartford Baking Company, uh, they're not, um, the proposal um, for the signs is not an increase in size. Um, and they're proposing one on the front facade and one in the rear where the parking area is. Um, we don't believe, you know, that it's uh, any substantial difference in change. Um, it is an aluminum panel, uh, about an inch thick, very sturdy. And uh, the the panel will be uh, painted uh, to look as, um, as you can see in the sign rendering there on page three, uh, cream color, some orange and brown. Um, the lighting will not change on the property. Um, we are removing, or it has been removed. Um, there were two signs on the door, on the front facade, on uh, both sides of the doors, which uh, has been removed, yeah. Um, so uh, in overall, it's a decrease in square footage, um, and we're before you for your approval. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. I'll open it up to questions and comments from the commissioners. We'll start with Mr. Renhan. Could you just tell us the material again is it's huh. going to be a painted metal? Yep, it's aluminum, one inch thick. Correct. Pan sign. Thanks. And did you say there's a sign, too, on the back? Uh, there is one on the uh, back entrance. Um, there is parking behind there. That's it. Thank you. Got it. Mm -hmm. I'm all set. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Bombaro? Uh, yeah, the only <clears throat> question is whether that aluminum panel is uh, typical or uh, will look okay, I guess. Maybe it's the right word. Maybe I'd, again, as usual, prefer to Ted what he thinks about that material. You know, I, I don't know what the material of the truffle sign is, but perhaps um, if someone is, you know, from staff is, is present, they can maybe verify the material um, of the truffle sign. Former. I'm not familiar with what the truffle sign is. I, okay. To be honest. Right. I mean, Mr. Sanford, were you going to say something? Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know a lot about signs, but. I, I think that's pretty comparable to what's there. 
the aluminum is kind of wrapped around a frame. So you're, you're not going to really know. I don't think that it's not painted wood. I mean, I think it's appropriate. Okay. Do you have any other questions or comments? No. No. Okay. Mr. Bombara. Okay. All right, hearing none, if there are any questions or comments from the public, if anybody is on, please raise your hand via Zoom and Catherine will be able to unmute you. Public hearing is open. If you are interested in making public comment, please raise your hand in the Zoom function. There are no hands raised at this point in time. Okay, hearing none, is there a motion on this application? Make a motion that we approve this application uh, uh, or grant it. Temporary statement of appropriateness in accordance with the application is submitted. Thank you very much. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed, please say aye. Hearing none. Any abstentions? Hearing none. Okay. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so that will conclude our public hearing for the evening and we'll be moving on to other business. I don't have any, does anybody want to add anything? Um, I don't know that, well, my baby was gonna be in Catherine's staff report. I'll just say that um, the town council did approve the addition of the um, additional homes to the Farmington Historic District and in fact, also to the Unionville uh, Historic Areas. Um, so that was great, great progress. And I wanted to thank um, all the town staff. Shannon, I don't think is on this call, but Shannon, I'm sure Sandy and Catherine also helped um, getting that through. Uh, I know we've talked already about a couple of new candidates, but I would encourage uh, us to continue to search for them. I know it's a process, so we're not gonna do it every year, but um, we should start making a list now and, and recruiting if we can. Great, thank yes, you. Yes, absolutely. If there's any um, interested properties, please send them over um, to town staff's way and we are working on compiling a list for the next round of um, inclusions so, or expansion. Great. Thank you. Would anybody like to add anything else? Okay, hearing none, I know Catherine has a few things she'd like to, uh, to speak to us about. Catherine, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, yeah, so just in the last week, um, Town staff received an inquiry from Katie Bradley regarding a fence that has been previously approved. Um, so it is this fence, and I will show you a map of where it has been previously approved. Here on Main Street, it's been approved up to this point. Now, due to some landscaping changes, they've cleared out some shrubbery in this red area and are looking to extend the fence. Um, now, typically this will come before you all for um, certificate of appropriateness, but due to the previously approved um, fence, I am before you um, wondering if there are any questions, comments, or concerns regarding this work um, and uh, wondering if you guys want this managed with staff review. Um, otherwise, we, uh, they can put in an application do a public hearing um, for our September meeting. And when were they looking to install the fence, the, the remaining piece of the fence? Um, I don't know what it said. I don't believe there was a date, but um, it came in past our notification period okay. um, for this meeting and has been previously approved. Um, so it's to replace the wooden fence between 59 and 63 Main Street. Okay, well, I'll open it up to the commissioners and see if they have any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns. Uh, why don't we just go, we'll go down the list, Mr. Sanford? I was hoping that that's what they were gonna do, extend the fence. <laughs> uh, I, I'm fine with it. I think it'll look good. Okay, Mr. Bombara? Yeah, again, I uh, know I'm Mr. Procedure. I, I, I'm fine with it uh, and I can't imagine that if there was a formal application before us that I would object at that point. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what's being asked. It, it, you know, I, I guess they technically do need to get a, a permit. If they're just looking for some sort of general guidance, I would suspect that uh, they'd probably easily get their approval. So I'll leave it at that. Mr. Renahan? 
Yeah, I think it's a, a positive development, but follow procedure, whatever it is. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Catherine, if we could please have uh, Katie submit an application for the September meeting, that would be sure. great, thank I, you. I will let her know. And I uh, just wanted to give you guys that update about the fence, so. Thank you. And I think you said you had one additional thing. Is that right? Or yeah, I, I just wanted to, um, we are approaching our August break where we won't have any land use meetings. And come September, it is town staff's intention to um, move as many of us um, in person as possible. Um, state legislation allows for land use meetings to continue with a hybrid remote um option uh through 2022 um but come september um of in two months i invite you all back to town hall to host these meetings in person again if there's um, other circumstances where individuals um would prefer to call in we will be making those accommodations um, for the public as well as commission members um, but we're working on some renovations to the council chambers that will make it easier to, I shouldn't say renovations, there's some uh, reorganizing of furniture <laughs> um, that will make hosting our meetings a little bit more uh, seamless, which has been the hold up on bringing people back in person. So um, just wanted to provide that update and let you all know that I'm hopeful that uh, we can all be together in um, September in council chambers. Okay. Thank you. Do any commissioners have any questions or comments that they'd like to add? Just, and Catherine, so you're saying they would have a hybrid meeting so that if somebody wanted to participate via Zoom, they could do that? Correct. And is there, um, does it work well? I mean, what's, is it, how hard is this <laughs> well, to do? There's been a reason we, put, we felt off as long as we did. Um, part of the issue is the way the screens are set up in the council chambers, as you guys are familiar with, is they're on um, either end of the room um, and the camera in the middle. So we're working on upgrading the cameras and microphones and screens so that you as commission members can see the information um, and that people phoning in or Zooming in remotely have the same access to the information. So it makes it a little clunky for staff management, um, but it's important that we continue to provide um, remote options for people um, where necessary. Yeah, that, so that's so that's interesting. Actually, now that I, I'm thinking, you just made me think of this a little bit differently. So I was thinking more about commission members, and you know, I, I know most of the, I think at least the people on this call today, you know, also are still working full time, and so sometimes it's just easier um, not to spend the time. Uh, unfortunately, with Route Four traffic. Hopefully, the pipe will be done. Um, yeah, but, <laughs> when it is done. It's still a pain. So, you know, it would be nice to have that option. I mean, I guess I would feel, you know, personally, I would try to make my schedule so that I could attend in person because I do think that's, that's that's better if you can. But then you just said something that made me think, well, wait a minute, what about the public? So, again, there's people who might have applications that also work full time and to, that have more, you know, they're not as flexible as some of us might be. So it really is important that they can call in. Do you think that that's going to continue to be an option uh, beyond 22, or is this something that eventually won't be an option? Because I suspect we, we might get more applicants using the uh, Zoom than anybody else. Yeah. Can, can I just add something quickly? Sorry, I just wanted to let uh, Mr. Ambar let you know that I, I've been speaking with, I was speaking with Shannon and Sandy uh, prior to this meeting and had been speaking with Catherine. We're actually going to start looking at some potential options to uh, change the time of our meetings in starting in 2022. And we'll bring that to the commissioners to discuss and take a look at. But so we're, we, we wanna obviously try to make it as easy for the commissioners and for applicants because the majority of folks are working full time. So we, we are thinking about that certainly, but I'll, sorry, Catherine, I'll, I'll give it back to you about the, the uh, virtual aspect, but I wanted to add that. Yeah, so the virtual component is allowed um, by state legislation. So the ability to do a hybrid or remote meeting is being allowed through 2022. 
obviously times are changing. A lot of people really value and appreciate the remote element and allows people to be more engaged um, with commissions and work like that. And I think that is important, but again, um, it's currently only being allowed through state legislation. So we'll have to keep our pulse on how that all continues to play out. But at this point in time, um, town staff is gonna be uh, working to make sure that those hybrid options are um, available and um, a good experience for people who are trying to um, stay informed and a part of these sorts of processes. Okay, great, thanks. And uh, just for the benefit of the commissioners, you know, when, when do you think we would have a potentially an idea of some options for changing the time of the meeting to be later in the day to make it more flexible and easier for, for folks? It's usually something we go over in the fall. Usually okay. during August break, I work on a draft schedule and I can give you the compilation of all the different commissions that I have to schedule and what's available from the town council uh, chambers. And so like, whatever, September, October, we can start okay. looking at a draft and then see what days are available and kind of okay. go from there for timing. So, okay, so thank you. Evan, are, are you, so you're suggesting that we might meet like most how you boards do at seven o'clock or is that the well i we wanted to at least bring some options to the for you know for the whole commission to to discuss but i think the objective was to at least make it later than 4 p.m post 5 p.m maybe even six maybe even 6 p.m i'm not sure we could do seven because a lot of the dates unfortunately are um my understanding was a lot of the there are a lot of meetings that take place at seven so we would have a challenge finding um, space, but you know that that's something that we're definitely going to take a look at. But uh, obviously, we want we want to get input from from all of the commissioners and the town staff to make sure we can find something that works well for everybody. Yeah, uh, I, I will, for what it's worth, and Sandy probably knows best of anybody that's on the call. I think these meetings used to be at two o'clock in the afternoon, and I pushed. Yeah, when I started, they were. Yeah, <laughs> I got it to three. And then, uh, and then I got it to four, so we're making progress. You might leapfrog right over that. Um, and I will say, and I, I'm not honestly trying to take a shot at anyone, there were a few members on the, on the board that were adamant that they could not do it at night. I don't believe there's anybody on the board anymore. Is that okay. I know. Crazy. Okay. So once we have that, um, and I know it's going to take some juggling with, with for, for Sandy and the staff, but we really appreciate your kind of piecing it all together as we uh, as we work through that. Um, any other questions on that or, or, or anything else that we've discussed? Uh, okay. Can we jump back to the Miss Porter's question? I saw in Katie's email that she had, she was requesting to get this resolved before the kids come back in September. Is there anything we can do to give her an answer sooner than making her come to the September meeting? Our next meeting is September 13th, guess something. Yeah, so. September 21st. 21st. So that will be the next option to host a public meeting unless we do a special Or it's, a, and it's, I don't know, the other commissions, it's within your purview to say fence is already there. We've, it was approved in 2012. I think yeah. the, what's there now. And have you seen any issues with the stability or the look of the fence that gives you cause to think that, well, maybe it should be a different material or? I, I don't. I actually walk by that fence and admire it. Yeah. I think it looks really good. So, yeah, I, I don't think I'm that's I don't know what the actual I, 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 I mean, I, I I email speed though. it is, but. So, I, if you, I mean, you can talk to Katie. I would suggest, well, I would suggest that they do need a permit um, yep. because it's in a new spot, uh, unfortunately. I would suggest that we relay the discussion today. And I think what Katie's really thinking of, I know the way Porters works, it's a great institution with a lot of resources, is that she'll decide whether to, well, I guess I would suggest she can take the risk and buy the materials uh, and then, you know, be ready to install it as soon as we have our meeting and or um, I'm willing to show up. I mean, again, if we're remote, this is, again, another reason that makes it so easy. If we want to have a quick special meeting, uh, even if I'm not in town, I can 
jump on in the third week or August or whatever. But um, I, I'm happy to be flexible. And obviously, Porters is a great neighbor. And if they really need to get this done or want to, I'm, I'm willing to be flexible. I can have a follow-up conversation with Katie about um, her timeline for um, uh, construction and letting her know that uh, it's preferred that she comes back for um, a formal application hearing and that we can um, have conversations if our September um, timeline is uh, workable for, for everyone. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. And if we, yep. um, you know, if, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I just, I just, you yeah, know, if, if they, if, if she's adamant and, and really wants to get the fence up, then we'll have, you know, we'll have a special meeting and hopefully we'll have a quorum and we can uh, get it approved, get it approved for her um, and for Porter, Miss Porter's school. So, you know, I agree with Jay, I, I can make myself available, but if we can avoid having to bring everybody, um, together great if uh, if they really are adamant about it then um then we can certainly do that but um kind of leapfrogging from that i realize that we no longer have a quorum um nope. and so we can't really vote on the minutes so right so do we need so we just don't approve the minutes correct yeah, fine. i'll just have it on the next agenda okay and, and we'll and we'll, there's the correction of the date of the yep. minutes yeah, mm -hmm. just so everybody knows, it was, it was from May 18th. So, okay, well, um, can we even can we even vote on adjournment or do I, when there's not a quorum? We I'm not even... <laughs> vote, we can just adjourn. Okay, so we'll just adjourn the meeting. I hope everybody has a great rest of your week. If we uh, do meet in August, um, I'll look forward to seeing you then. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in September. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thank everyone. Have a good night. Have Take care. Bye-bye.